After Percy went away, Duck was left to manage alone. He did so, easily. Duck's presence made a big impact on the yard. He arranged the trucks and coaches well and bustled along comfortably with tasks Percy had been struggling with. Although they had yet to accept him, the bigger engines were pleased with Duck's work. All except one. If you're thinking of pulling the train, don't! We big engines don't need another tank engine having ideas above his station. I'm only heating up the coaches, which is only right given you're five minutes late. Pa! Watch your mouth! You're in the presence of an express engine. Now get out of my way! Swindon engines know how to treat their shunters properly, Huff Duck. Honestly, I don't see what his problem is. The problem was that Gordon hadn't forgotten Duck and Percy's form of protest on the Western engine's first day. Henry and James had put this behind them by now, but Gordon wasn't so quick to do the same. It's disgraceful, he grumbled. If he's to fetch our coaches, then he should be taking orders from us. The fat controller isn't here every day to do that for him. He wasn't as simple as we first thought. Ah oh, well, at least he's a good shunter, and he doesn't play any tricks. I, for one, am glad he isn't following Thomas and Percy's tradition. Instead, he thinks his superior should order him about. I don't know which is worse. At that moment, Duck bustled in. Hello, Henry. Your goods train is waiting for you on track four. Oh, beg pardon, but I'll need the siding you're in for James's tankers now. And Gordon, could you go to... Just who do you think you are? thundered Gordon. Duck frowned. I'm... You have enough cheek to waddle in here, demanding special treatment. Now you think you have the right to order us about. I'm not ordering you, I'm simply telling you. We will move when we are ready, snapped Gordon. Now waddle off and leave us big engines in peace. Um, you do realise we were due to leave now anyway, don't you? Waddle off indeed, Flew Duck. That greasy Gresley. Alton Hall would put him in his place. Do you mind? I'm trying to sleep. Stow it, you. I'm not in the mood today. Good morning, Duck. Oh, um, hello, Edward. Oh, beg pardon. I was just about to get your trucks ready. Oh, don't worry. I'll fetch them, said Edward kindly. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. I thought tender engines here didn't shunt, said Doc bemused. More like some refused to, chuckled Edward. There's quite a story behind that. Anyway, are you all right? You seemed a little flustered when I arrived. Duck sighed and told Edward all about Gordon. And then he told me to waddle off, Duck finished. We engines have our ways, but that's no excuse for a lack of respect. Edward agreed. Gordon often looks down on those smaller than him. But don't worry. Take it in your stride for now. Underneath all that arrogance is a good-hearted engine, he smiled. Duck continued to work hard and kept Edward's advice in mind. He kept clear of Gordon whenever possible and stayed in the company of the other engines instead. Soon, Gordon's arrogance appeared to be settling but there was something about him that Duck had yet to discover. A good strain? I won't do it. I'm an express engine for goodness sake. Get Henry to take it. That controller chose you to pull it, said the driver. Now show a wheel and get moving already. Calm down, Gordon. You haven't even left and your safety valve's already bursting. Oh, 
Oh, well, James has been delayed, and I wonder who's taking this lot. Oh, bother. Ow! Stop sulking, Gordon. Well, it's not my fault there's a duck amongst these dirty trucks. Are you all right, duck? It's okay. He's uncoordinated after all. Gordon glared. How's about you let me do the shunting? You can't have empty vans in the middle, otherwise they'll pa Gordon hissed. Trucks in the middle, trucks at the back. What do I care? And he stormed out of the yard before Duck could reply. Morning, Duck. What was all that about? That, said Duck, is trouble. Has he always been like this with trucks? Out on the main line, Gordon was proving hard to handle. Steady, boy, steady. You'll knock the train to bits at this rate. Well, if they were coaches, they'd come quietly. those trucks to rock about this much though. Better check them when we reach Wellsworth. But Gordon didn't make it. As they rounded a bend, the empty vans jolted violently. Then suddenly... Whoa, Gordon, stop, stop! What on earth happened back there? Typical trucks rocking themselves off the rails, I'm guessing. Although this time they had some help. Gordon said nothing. The news soon spread back to the yard. Gordon's knocked his trucks off the line near Wellsworth. We need the breakdown train. I did try to warn him. I'll look after the yard, Duck. You know where the crane is, don't you? said Edward. He winked. Show them how it's done in Swindon. I never put empty stock in the middle, unless you want this. Ah, there's the breakdown crew at last. Well then, Puff Duck silently. Looks like I'd better get to work. Later at the sheds that evening, the engines were unusually silent. Until the fat controller arrived. Gordon, he thundered, I am very disappointed. Like them or not, I expect you to pull trucks to the same quality as the express. However, he said, turning to Duck, this wouldn't have happened if the train had been shunted properly to begin with. Duck faltered. Sir, beg pardon, but Duck isn't at fault here, sir, interrupted Gordon. It was all because of me. The fat controller stared. Go on, Gordon. I've been... Well, I've... Well, I've been disgraceful towards him lately, and doing so eventually led to today's events. His work ethic here has been superb. And I regret to say it's taken me this long to accept him as part of the railway. We engines have our ways, he continued. But it's about time I treated our new tank engine the right way. Well then, smiled the fat controller. Thank you for owning up, Gordon. An excellent work from you, Duck. If this is how they do it on the Great Western, then I must say I'm quite impressed. Duck felt flattered. Oh, thank you, sir. And thank you too, Gordon. By the way, Gordon, do you know how long it takes a flying kipper to get to Vickerstown? Um, I, I don't know, sir. Well, you can find out as you'll be taking it for the next month. It's a train of vans, after all, so I imagine you could learn a lot from it. The other engines laughed, while Gordon fell embarrassingly silent. After the fat controller left, the engines fell silent again, until Gordon spoke up. 
I suppose I'd better get used to the smell of fish on my tender, he said sheepishly. And it looks like I'll be arranging the train for you tomorrow instead of Henry. Indeed. You know what? He added. Don't. You've worked hard enough today to earn yourself a rest in the morning. As Henry and James gasped, Gordon looked at Duck and grinned. Sodor engines know how to treat their shunters properly. Duck, the Great Western Engine, couldn't agree more. Gordon's getting on with the kipper. If he's enjoying it, then perhaps I'll get to take the morning express full time. Pah! Don't get used to it. I'll make sure I get my turn tomorrow. Here we go, my dear. Coaches on the Great Western. This lovely colour scheme. It's got chocolate and cream. Have you ever heard of it? Oh, God, I do like your red and white, of course, but I could never forget that classic Great Western colour. When it comes to livery, the Great Western livery is the best one around. And then there are the engines. They're all painted green with beautiful colours. And do you know what else? All this Great Western talk is starting to get on my nerves. Now that you mention it, I agree. Of course, not the engines. 